Well, good morning, Fresno Pacific family. It's good to see you today. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. My name is Nick Allen, and on behalf of the Board of Trustees, I'd like to welcome you to the 2022 Spring Commitment, Commencement of Fresno Pacific University. Yes. Today we celebrate the achievements of our graduates in the School of Business, Humanities, Religion, and Social Science, and the Biblical Seminary. A special thanks to families, spouses, friends, and many others who have supported the candidates in this journey. We also extend an appreciation to the members of the Fresno Pacific University community, including our Board of Trustees, faculty, staff, administrators, alumni, and the many supporters that are here today. I would like to acknowledge the faculty for their work they have done to work alongside these graduates as they have made this academic journey. Thank you for responding to God's call on your life and for serving these precious students. Graduates, it is my privilege to acknowledge your achievements and uh, invite you into the commencement of a fresh new journey today, which explores God's path and plan for your life. You have made a tenacious uh, effort in your work, endured the challenges, and have overcome the many obstacles that you have faced over these last few years. You have explored your gifts, practiced your professions, discerned your calling, and embraced the hope that Jesus extends to you. 
As a graduate, you are now stepping through a door with different and uh, new opportunities, and you will see through the lenses that you have developed through your time at FPU and will continue to engage a faith that is founded on the Lord our God's promises. Graduates, we applause your hard work and accomplishments and rejoice in new beginnings with you. We celebrate your victories and those who walked alongside you with encouragement, sacrifice, love, and affirmation. May the Lord bless you richly with his presence, granting you life abundantly, love that is never ending, and faith to believe that possible happens when you trust the Lord with all your heart. Congratulations and go Sunbirds. I'd like to invite Gary Metcalf, Director of Facilities, uh, who will lead us in an invocation, and Martha Fragosa, Assistant Director of Admissions, who will read scripture. I'd ask you to please stand with me, and uh, gentlemen, please remove your hats. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, your word instructs us to come into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. As we, as we gather together in this place, we want to honor you for making this possible through the efforts of so many. We thank you first and foremost that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures that we might have eternal life and the fullness of your salvation. We recognize that this invitation is not to simply enter into the place where you dwell, but that we continue to proceed in our walk with the Holy Spirit that leads us into your very presence. We praise you for Fresno Pacific University and the vision you placed on the hearts of its founders that continues until this day. We praise you today for the many dedicated students, faculty, and staff that we work together to make this day of graduation possible. Good morning. Our scripture reading is from Matthew 19, verses 16 through 26. Just then a man came up to Jesus and asked, Teacher, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? Why do you ask me about what is good? Jesus replied, There is only one who is good. If you want to enter life, keep the commandments. Which ones? He inquired. Jesus replied, You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. Honor your father and mother, and love your neighbor as yourself. All these I have kept, the young man said. What do I still lack? Jesus answered, if you want to be perfect, go, sell your possessions, and give to the poor. And you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. When the young man heard this, he went away sad, because he had great wealth. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Truly I tell you, it is hard for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished and asked, Who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is possible, but with God, all things are possible. Please be seated.
Good morning. Good morning. For this is the day that the Lord has made. And let us with our graduates be glad in it. Greetings to our graduates, the Golden Grads, family and friends. My name is Joseph Jones. I'm the president of this university. Earlier this morning, uh, a scripture passage uh, just came to me. It's not very long. Uh, and I thought I would share it with you because I think it's very ap appropriate for as you're thinking about your future. Listen to this. This is Isaiah 48, seven, uh, 17 and 18. Listen carefully now. And this is what the prophet is actually saying. It says, this is what the Lord says, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord your God who directs you in the way you should go. If you only had paid attention to my commands, your peace would have been like a river, your well-being like the waves of the sea. And what are those commands? We just said those earlier. And Jesus stated them very clearly to kind of summarize those. And he says, the greatest of those are to love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And I believe if we commit ourselves to this, even as you start your journey, your new journey, that the Prince of Peace will guide your steps for your future. I'm here this morning to actually introduce our speaker. It is Councilman Von Muwanatoa. Councilman uh, Muwanatoa was first elected to the City Council uh, of Clovis in March of 2017 and is also currently serving as the Director of External Relations and Project Development for Community Health Systems. This is one of the uh, largest employers in the Central Valley and also the largest health care giver in the Central Valley. Councilman Muatoa came to the United States of America on Monday, November 15, 1976. His parents and 10 children immigrated here as refugees from Laos after the Kingdom of Laos fell to the communist rule. Many Hmong found, <coughs> excuse me, many Hmong fought alongside of Americans during the Vietnam War. However, their battles were fought in neighbor, neighboring Laos in a secret war, as it was called, that a few knew about. Over one-third of Hmong people were, uh, were killed or died in that war while rescuing American pilots, stopping the Ho Chi Minh Trail and conducting special ops missions with the U.S. Laos fell, and with it, so did freedom for an entire nation. Thus, the Hmong had to leave a homeland that no longer welcomed them. For many Hmong families, this thirst to live a free people, as a free people, led to uh, them coming to America and consequently here to the Central Valley. I believe this is the second largest community in the country. Vaughn's father <coughs> always shared with his children, America provides the best opportunities for success. If you work hard, be honest, serve others, and remember God, it will lead to a worthwhile life. Vaughn moved to Clovis from Huntington Beach in 1996. He studied at UCLA and went to obtain his Jewish doctorate uh, degree from San Joaquin College of Law. In addition to working at Community Hospital, he also teaches at Fresno State, and on Sundays, he teaches at his local church. Actually, that's children at his local church. Passionate about service, Vaughn has and continues to serve in many capacities and various organizations within our community. Most notably, he spent 
over 10 years on the Clovis Planning Commission, the last four years as its chair. With encouragement from his wife, Jane, who's with us today, his five children and his family, Vaughn has humbled himself to honor us in his service in this region and in the Clovis community. Grateful for the amazing opportunities here in America, Vaughn will work hard and continues to work hard for everyone to actually serve the San Juan King Valley. FPU graduates and guests, welcome with me, Mr. Vaughn Muatoa. They have to tell you all that, so that way I'm worthy of being able to speak in front of you. You know, there were these three pastors, they were holding a retreat, and they were out in the, kind of in the hills next to a river. And there's a senior pastor, a pastor has been there about four or five years, and a newly recruit. And it was going to be a whole day event, and around 10 o'clock, you know, they looked and they said, you know, people look thirsty. So the senior pastor says, you know, let me go get the water. And, and the water was across the river. So the senior pastor slowly walks and walks right on the water, grabs a case of water, walks right back across the river and hands it to the people. And people were amazed. It's about lunchtime now. And so they must be hungry. So the second pastor goes, I'll go get the lunches walks up, walks right on the water across the other side of the river, grabs the packs of lunches, comes back, hands it to the people. Afternoon now, snack time. So the rookie pastor goes, I'll go get the snack. And he starts and he walks and he falls in the water. Gets back up. He goes, my goodness, I'm a pastor. I, I, I better know, you know, be able not to let these guys down. Gets up again, steps back five steps. Now he goes, falls down. A little bit more embarrassed, he goes, okay, I'm going to get a running start. Steps back about 20 feet, runs, and still falls in the water. And as he falls in the third time, the senior pastor leans over to the, you know, second pastor. He goes, should we tell him where the rocks are? <laughs> in life, it's like that. You look at the people you admire and you go, they must walk on water. They must be able to do something special. And one day someone will look at you and say, you must walk on water. You must be doing something special. But really, it's where you step. And you have looked at your teachers, you have looked at mentors, and they have shown you this is how you step in order to obtain this degree, in order to mix this formula, in order to guide this student or this patient. And one day it will be you. And so I look forward to the day when you will teach others where to step. And today my hope is that I share with you some of the places that I have stepped on in order to be where I'm at today. You know, first of all, I want to thank Dr. Jones and his lovely wife, Yvette. You know, I know that he has been a blessing to not just the school, but to the entire region here. And I know that you are leaving soon. And I want to first thank his two daughters and their families for loaning you to us all these years. Many times as great leaders, you are not home as much. You don't get to see the grandchildren go play their games. And now you get to have them back to share in the lives of your lives and also of your grandchildren. So thank you, Dr. Jones, for honoring me with the opportunity to share some words with your graduates. I also would like to just welcome Dr. Andre Stevens for coming here to Fresno. I know that he will be the next incoming president. I also would like to honor Trustee Chair Joshua Wilson and the Board of Trustees for allowing and approving, you know, just doing the work that you do for this university. Thank you so much for just giving guidance to the university and to the teachers and faculty. To all the vice presidents, provosts, directors, to the faculty, staff, and all the volunteers, to the distinguished guests and the alumni, and most important to the parents, friends, and loved ones of our graduates today. Thank you for being here. 
And it would behoove me if I don't give thanks to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who, had, who belongs all the glory and all the honor today. It's humbling to speak to this larger crowd. You know, when you're a politician, my dream when I became a politician was to be able to say what all politicians say, my fellow Americans. And I looked at all of you and I go, I don't know what to say to you. And so I'll just get right in. I have to thank my parents because they're the ones who had the dream but also the sacrifices to bring us to America to fight in that war and to develop us to be who we are. A lot of what I am today, I owe to them. I also want to thank my wife, Jane, and the kids. You know, as a servant, many times, like I said about Dr. Jones, we're out a lot, and I appreciate that you are my backbone. You are my greatest support, so thank you for your love. You know, Fresno Pacific University is a hidden jewel in the Central Valley. 1860 was when the Mennonite Brethren began 1908, first college in Kansas. 1944, started the Pacific Bible Institute here. 1976, the name changed to Fresno Pacific College. 1997, it became Fresno Pacific University. Your mission is develop students for leadership and service through excellence in Christian higher education. You have the highest four-year graduation rate. And that is something to be proud of because we keep graduating first, more than half of you are first generation college graduates. I live here and I'm a little bit biased, but I think that's a record to be proud of, to graduate from an institution with those accolades. You know, the Hmong have a saying, whatever I share today, if it's bad, throw it away. If it's useful, take it with you and hopefully it'll be helpful in your life. See, the Hmong came to America because of the Vietnam War. We were in Laos, we were in the hills, and the Ho Chi Minh Trail would cut through the hills of Laos. And it took our people working alongside Americans to stop that trail. And like Dr. Jones said, a third of our people died in that effort. But our people chose freedom. Our cho people chose life. And we tell that story a lot to our children, and we tell it to you. And I say to you, go learn your origin story. For if you know not who you come from, where you come from, you are like a person who got hit in the head and they forgot who they are. We call those people lost, and you do not need to be lost. Find out from where in Mexico you came from, from where in Germany you came from, and what your parents stood for and what they believed in, so that you can tell that story over and over again to the many generations after you. Do not be lost. Each story is special. You know, in Clovis, a couple years ago, they went and showed a Walkman, a Walkman, some of you may know, to a group of junior hires, and they asked them what it was. And because there was no cassette, they couldn't figure it out. You know, this big old box, you know, we hung it on the side of our hips too. And they didn't know because all they had was a little iPod now or even on their phones. You see, that's how quickly you'll forget if you don't tell your story. That in just one generation, they'll forget what you stood for and what you came from. So don't be lost. Our escape from Laos came on May 17, 1975. I was four years old. It was a military bed truck that my uncles all rented. In the middle of the night, we all got on it, went to the Mekong River, got on river boats, went across to Thailand to the refugee camps there. We arrived in America on November 15th, all 10 of us. You see, every day that you wake up and the soil behind, underneath you is American soil, you already have one. There's no place on earth people want to be than here. And you are here. And we appreciate that. You know, when we first came to America, we were sponsored by a church and we were in Torrance. And my brother and I went out and we found all these coins. And we came home and said, Dad, look, we found American money. And he said, go put that back. Do you know they're testing you to see if you're honest? 
my brother and I went back and we were trying to figure out where it was. The hard part was with if it was heads or tails. No. <laughs> but we put all that money back. But America gave us so much. You see, this is the only place in which your story gets woven into the American story. And it's the only place in which lineage doesn't matter, background doesn't matter, hard work matters. And if you work hard, you become the next leader. You become part of that American story. You know, we were poor. We were on public assistance. We had the food stamps, different color money back then. We had the Medi-Cal that had the sticker that you had to take off when you put on the doctor's uh, place when you went in. But my dad always said, son, if you're poor on the outside, you'll be poor however long it takes for you to get a good job. But if you're poor on the inside, you'll be poor your entire life. So be rich on the inside. You see, there is a story that I think is important in which you will have to choose. There was this lazy man. He didn't want to work. He went to a farm, probably like a farm here in Selma. He saw some fruits and he gathered the fruits. And as he was gathering, the farmer came out with a stick to chase him because he was stealing the fruits. And the man ran into the forest nearby. And as he was in the forest, he saw a lion coming, so he ran up on the tree. And he saw the lion had some meat in his mouth already. But also right there was a fox that had two bad weird legs. The fox could not move. And he was going, oh no, that fox is going to die. And he sat up there on that tree watching. And the lion came, dropped the meat right next to the fox, let the fox eat, and the lion went away. And right then he said, oh my goodness, if God loves this animal that much, he must love me. I'm his main creation, right? I'm, him, I'm man. So he goes back into town, and he stays at the corner waiting for people to feed him. And he waits all day and no one's given him anything. And he kind of gets frustrated and he leaves. And as he leaves, he sees this wise man. He, he told him the story. And he said, how come God doesn't love me as much as he loves that animal? He gave that fox a lion to come and give me. I stood at the corner all day. And the wise man said, I think you saw the things wrong. You were not meant to be the fox. You were meant to be the lion. Graduates, you are meant to be lions. You are meant to go grab things to give to those who can't do. And with your degree today, you can go even farther, give even more. May you be the lion that God created you to be. May you choose not to be lazy, but may you choose to serve others. America gave us so many other things as well. It gave us grocery stores. It gave us birthdays and holidays. Things that sometimes we take for granted. And right around the corner or tomorrow... It was already Mother's Day. I remember our first Christmas. We came in November 15th, so sort of at the end, about a month, is Christmas. Sort of in the middle of the month of December, the neighbor across the street comes over with a cut tree, knocks on the door, and my father's looking, and I go, what in the world is this man doing, bringing us a tree? And he said, no, you put it in your living room, and then during December 25th, you give each other gifts. And that was our first Christmas, learning to give to each other. America also gave us education. This is the ticket to success. This is the ticket out of poverty. When we were young, five uncles, big families in, in Hmong, okay, like 10 kids, they would sit all of us together in a row like this. They would go from the elder one to the youngest one, and you sat by age, and they would go, what do you want to be? And you would hear, doctor. You would go, what's your GPA? 3.5. No lecture. Got to a person, what do you want to be? Musician. Lecture, right? What are you going to do? How are you going to make a living? So all you heard was doctor, lawyer, engineer, teacher. So when it came to us, you knew you better say something about 3.5. So it was like, oh, 3.8. A lawyer, so you got moved along. But education was important, and that was our job. My, that's what my dad did to us. You see, the American experiment with all 10 of us, just this, our kids, has been amazing. We have a doctor, we have an MBA, we have someone in seminary right now in, in uh, Fresno Pacific. We have teachers, and we have lawyers, and we have politicians. 
But the American experiment regarding the Hmong for the 45 years is amazing. This is truly a blessed nation. We have teachers, lawyers, we have fashion designers, PhDs, doctors, cardiologists. We have beauticians, musicians, MBA cheerleaders, and the one you probably have just heard of this last summer, the all-around female gold medalist, Sunisa Lee is a young Hmong girl. You see, that's what America gave us. That's what hard work give us, gives us. And here locally, we have your first Moto America motorcycle racer, Aiden Tao. He's Clovis young man, and he's racing amongst the best in the world. Graduates, I give you four quick lessons for you to take with you. One, dream with your eyes wide open. We all dream at night. But now it's time to dream with our eyes open, to look at things and to be able to say what Robert Kennedy said. Some people see things as they are and say, why? I dream of things that never were and say, why not? That has to be your attitude. That has to be your way of dreaming. Dr. King said, when people dream, you have a purpose. And when there is a purpose, you stand up straight and you move. And when you do that, no one can ride on your back. We must keep moving. We must keep going. If you can't fly, run. If you can't run, walk. And if you can't walk, crawl. But by all means, keep moving. So dream. Dream with your eyes wide open. Next, find your purpose in life. There's a scene in the Avengers that was funny, but I think we forgot its true meaning. See, there was a scene when Star-Lord and Iron Man and Drax was fighting with Thanos, and they were looking for Gamora because, you know, Thanos sent Gamora to another place. And Star-Lord goes, where is Gamora? And Iron Man goes, I'll do you one better. Who is Gamora? And Drax said the most important piece of all. I'll do you one better than that. Why is Gamora? And we all laughed. And when you think back, that was the most important question. Why was she important? Because she knew where the soul stone was. And you have to find out your why. Because if you don't find out your why, you don't find out what is in your soul, then you lose your purpose. And as Steve Jobs says, when you have no purpose, you give up and you quit. But as you find your purpose, may you season it with good character with decency, with integrity in what you do. Third, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. There's going to be walls. There's going to be setbacks. There's going to be obstacles. But those aren't there to stop you. They're to stop all the other people who don't want it as much as you do. So get over the walls. There'll be a little pain. There'll be some sacrifices. But because there's those walls there, don't quit. Thomas Edison said, many of life's failures are people who did not realize how close they were to success when they gave up. Don't you give up. Because sometimes you'll go, it's not worth it. But may the words of Mother Teresa remind us that it's worth it. People are often unreasonable, irrational, and self-centered. Forgive them anyway. If you are kind, people may accuse you of selfish, ulterior motives. Be kind anyway. If you are successful, you will win some unfaithful friends and some genuine enemies. Succeed anyway. If you are honest and sincere, people may deceive you. Be honest and sincere anyway. What you spend years building, others may destroy overnight. Build anyway. If you find serenity and happiness, some may be jealous. Be happy anyway. The good you do today will often be forgotten. Do good anyway. Give the best you have, and it will never be enough. Give your best anyway. In the final analysis, it is between you and God. It was never between you and them anyway. You see, there's all these traits, but I want to remind you that the greatest trait of all is courage. 
For without courage, you cannot love. For without courage, you cannot give. For without courage, you cannot build. Courage is what we all need in order to do all the other virtues that are listed. So have courage. And I know that currently in the world, it seems like it's so chaotic. But I want to remind you, God is still in control. The world may seem bleak. You may be going through trials and more misfortunes. It may look like a mess. But sometimes we have to be reminded that it's like a little boy who sits and sees his mom sewing nice embroidery. And as the boy looks up, all he sees is crisscrosses going the stitch tight here and there. And the boy goes, Mom, what are you doing? And she goes, I'm sewing something beautiful, son. And the boy goes, no, it's not. It's ugly. The robes are all here. The colors are all mismatched. And he goes, wait, just wait. And finally, the mom finishes the final one, stitches it up. And the mom picks up his boy, puts him on her lap. And they look the embroidery from on top. And they see the beautiful tapestry that was just sewn. You see, when we look from the human perspective, we look up and say, God, this is terrible. Why? And God said, wait, it's beautiful. I have something beautiful for your life. It's going to work out. And you go, no, it doesn't. This is crisscross. There's a thread heading here. Why am I poor? Why am I this? And he goes, wait, I have something beautiful. And if you allow God to pick you up, sit you on his lap, and he'll show you, this is the beautiful life I have for you, my child. This is what I'm painting. This is what I'm creating. That day you will also then realize he does have a master plan. And it's great, and it's beautiful, and it's for me. So allow us, allow yourselves to look at life from God's perspective and not our human perspective. And lastly, when you have made it, be humble. Be humble, yet keep growing. Denzel Washington said it, right? Don't just aspire to make a living. Aspire to make a difference. Have a grateful heart. Give back. Help the least amongst you. The American with Disabilities Act was passed to help the most physically incapable within us. But how many of you have benefited from that? Where now you stroll your baby along on the sidewalk and you just go without having to lift up. You ride your bike and you just go. But we are helping the least amongst us. And when we do that, we help everyone. So please take the time to look to help those who are behind you. And as you look to better your life, many times we work to get a better car, a better home, you know, a better opportunities for our children. But as you do give those better things, the things that they or you never had, may you always give them the things that you have, your faith, your hard work, your history. Give them those things as well. I will conclude with the parable of the Good Samaritan. And many of you probably heard it because you go to a Christian school, so they'll teach it to you. But you see, there was a Jew that was beat up on the side of the road. And he couldn't move. And many people came by, right? Doctors, lawyers, fellow Jews. And they would come and they would not stop to help a fellow Jew who was beat up. And if you ever learn anything about the road to Jericho from Jerusalem, it's a winding road, and it's a dangerous road. And it's a road in which there probably was ambush, but a Samaritan, one who was not of the same background, color of the Jew, stopped, bandaged him up, took him, took him to the inn, gave extra money and said, hey, take care of this man. You know, there were two questions that were asked. The Jews who saw him and did not stop, what did they think? What would happen to me if I stopped? He might be lying. I might miss a conference. I might not make it on time. So why should I stop? But I hope you ask the question that the Samaritan asked. What will happen to him or to them or to my people or to my community? if I don't stop. 
May you always stop. Give the blessings that God has given you, the strengths that He has given you, and the talents that He has given you to help those who can. And I know that from this graduating class, we will look to see brighter, greater leaders, not just here in our community, but across the world. Thank you very much. God bless you. Congratulations. You'll find the words to the congregational hymn just inside the front cover of your program, so please stand as we sing together. Thank you, choir. And thank you, Council Mua Tanoa, for your encouraging and challenging words. Commencement is a time when we acknowledge the outstanding work of a member of our faculty, as well as the academic performance of members of the graduating class. Also, our seminary interim dean will present the Seminary Service Award to one of our community partners. The Nickel Excellence in Teaching Award was established in 2004 to recognize and honor professors who exhibited consistent excellence in educating FPU students in the university's traditional undergraduate programs. Recipients are nominated by junior and senior students who reflect on those professors who have had a lasting impact on their lives. A student responded and wrote about this year's recipient in this way. This person holds students to a higher standard in all aspects of courses while also remaining fair and understanding. Another they stressed practical application and has been a constant guide to trusting God throughout my entire time at FPU. 
This person has guided me to prospective careers in my field of study. This faculty member is the most helpful teacher I have ever had. We're all good. But this person inspires me in the way he teaches. There's the clue. This year's recipient of the Nickel Excellence in Teaching Award is Dr. Ken Chung, Professor of Chemistry. Dr. Chung, would you please stand? We worked hard to make sure you came today. Congratulations, Dr. Chung. Our first award, student award, goes to the student with the highest grade point average in the traditional baccalaureate graduating class. This level of academic performance is very difficult to maintain since every student must take classes from a broad range of disciplines. It is with great pleasure that we present three students with this award. First, Juliet Anastasia Hardy, a graduate in pre-health science with a pre-MD emphasis. Second, Colin Dale Moon, a graduate in pre-health science with a pre-MD emphasis. And third, Chloe Alexa Sharp, a graduate in kinesiology with an exercise physiology emphasis. Congratulations to Juliet, Callan, and Chloe on receiving this high academic honor. And I'm going to ask that you stand, please, wherever you happen to be. University faculty take great pride in recognizing students in the graduating class who reflect the highest ideals of the university and have excelled in their studies. This morning, I am honored to present the Harold H. Hack Academic Achievement Award to a member of the university's Alpha Chi Honor Society who has made a significant contribution to the university community, church, and shows promise for future success. Mrs. Betty Hack and the family of the late president, Dr. Harold Hack, have graciously provided a gift to honor an outstanding graduate each year. The Harold H. Hack Academic Achievement Award this year goes to Veronica Mendez Garcia a double major in history and social work, and has also served as the student body president. Veronica, please stand. Congratulations, Veronica. Each year, the seminary chooses to honor a local agency that models service to the community in the name of Christ. Together with a plaque commemorating the award, a donation is made to the agency to support the work that is at the core of its mission. This year, FPU Biblical Seminary is pleased to name Westside Church of God as the recipient of the 2022 Service Award. Westside Church of God has been a stable and faithful presence for the gospel in West Fresno for decades. Their Community De Development Corporation, Southwest CDC, is engaging the community in generous and healing ways that model the ministry of Jesus. They have established a counseling center to meet community needs and an education and career initiative to help students in their community be successful in their education and subsequent professional pursuits. Pastor Paul Binion has wisely and faithfully led the church since 1977 and simultaneously been a spiritual father 
an agent of reconciliation for the whole city, advising mayors and advocating for racial justice and compassionate care for the marginalized and the vulnerable. He is also a much appreciated collaborator with Fresno Pacific Biblical Seminary and with the larger university. It was our pleasure to make this award in person to Pastor Paul Binion at the Seminary Gala celebration last night. And it is our pleasure today to acknowledge in this setting the good work that Westside Church of God continues to do in Fresno. Fresno Pacific University is a Christian university known for its academic excellence, innovative programming, and spiritual vitality. Students from out throughout the San Joaquin Valley, across America, and around the world attend Fresno Pacific. The mission of the university is to develop students to engage the cultures and serve the cities through excellence in Christian higher education. The Board of Trustees of Fresno Pacific University has the responsibility of ensuring that the university effectively pursues its mission. It is a real honor and an enormous responsibility to serve as chair of the Board of Trustees, and I would like to thank all of the board members for their faithful service to Fresno Pacific University. Graduates, I would like to extend my congratulations on behalf of the Board of Trustees for this major milestone in your lives. We pray that God will continue to lead and bless you as you pursue your goals. Congratulations, class of 2022. And here we are. You ready for some magic words? Will the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts and Bachelors of Science please stand? President Jones, on behalf of the faculty of Fresno Pacific University, I am pleased to present these women and men for the bachelor's degree. They have, in, they have completed intensive study and have demonstrated excellence, work, and tenacity in their areas of knowledge. They are prepared to serve both God and humanity in this world. I present them to you as worthy candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science. By virtue of the authority invested in me as president by the Board of Trustees and on the recommendation of the faculty who have taught you, evaluated you, and modeled the Christian faith for you, I confer upon each of you the degree Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science as appropriate to your programs of study with all its privileges and obligation. Joining me in welcoming the graduates as they receive their diplomas will be our chair, Mr. Joshua Wilson. Graduates, please be seated. Mr. Chairman, Mr. President, and Madam Provost, I present to you the candidates from the School of Business. Alexi Rodriguez. 
Nicole Marie Garza. Elise Andrea Alvarez. Nicola Leah Watkins. Laura Lynn Clifton. Valentine G. Briones, Jr. Fabian Rios. Elizabeth Benitez. Clarissa Moreno. Alicia Maria Lopez. Zachary Reynolds. Josue Roberto Gonzalez. Nicholas Martinez. Cameron Olson. Clay Maroney. Dylan Sewell. Bertiana Covarubius. Liz Macias. Darren Person Jr. Jeremy Ray. April G. Navarro. Jennifer Ann Dallas. Nicholas LeBlanc. Uforma A. Effigene. Caterino Pardo. Cecilia Garcia. Elizabeth Sanchez. Jennifer Mua. William Coleman. Jessica F. Duran. Alexis Case. Bergita Eggert's daughter. Justin R. St. George. Virginia Meza. Leslie Higarita. Lauren G. Tucker. Maria D. Altamirano Castellanos. Manuel C. Valencia. David A. Simon. Isaac Parker Slater. Justin Allen Bossino. Joshua Newfield. Luke Papugian. Monica Cortez. Diana Rendon. Christopher Zacek. Karina Gonzalez. 
Mallory C. Thompson. Fiona Makiza. Matthew Stearns. Megan Sherritt. Amanda D. Briscoe. Kirill Baron. Alexander Avakian. Alice DiMatteo. Lindsay M. Severns. Kaylin De La Al. Gianna Gazar. Jose M. Canones. Renee E. Garcia. Nicole S. Murillo. Luis Abrica. Maria Delfina Romero. Andrew J. Martinez. Jonte M. Hamilton. Nick Falco. Andrew Lackey. We congratulate the graduates in the School of Business. Mr. Chairman, Mr. President, and Madam Provost, I present to you the candidates from the School of Education. Debbie V. Woods. Andre Rodriguez. Colleen Norris. Melissa Nicole Nachoa. Jessica Thane. Samantha Pitchford. Callie Gonzalez. Cynthia Lira. Emily Morris. Natalie Galetzia. Misty Duran. Angela M. Rodriguez. Maria G. Turnbull. Linda Silva. Jalisa Lopez. Leah K. Thompson. Jessica G. Flores. Jennifer Stahl. Megan C. Hilliard. Andrea S. Hernandez. Kayleen B. Hansen. Holly R. James.
Aaron Gonzalez Navarro. Serena R. Cardona. Angelica Quinones. Marissa M. Quinones. Cecilia Hernandez. Heather Fiore. Jaylene C. Rodriguez. Leslie C. Godiras. Ashley Casodias. Stacy Kwan. Claudia J. Maris. Chantia Leet. Lisa Navolo Pasias. Brian M. Rodriguez. Tulia Joanne Garcias. Natasha Tucker. Aldamari Walton. Margaret Mayo. Alexis E. Orrego. Cherise Villegas. Terry A. Ostenkamp. Amanda J. Cohen. Jessica Holmes. Yvette Garza. Emily Smith. Michaela Hollis. Catherine Elise Betterstow. Stacy Ortega Rendon. Shauna A. Young. Anna Iris Busani. Ashley Rodriguez. Paula Palomino. Anna K. Cambero. Cynthia Valencia. Jessica Schornfeger. Lagani Evangelo. Yasinia Gomez. Monica M. Monroy. Anna Rojos Bononinos. Ashley Lorraine Jones. Lizette Gutierrez. Denise Zapea Vela. Israel Garcia. Clarissa Zabellos. Vanessa Guardado. Patricia M. Velas. 
Cassandra L. Connors. Shannon R. Donovan. Fabiola Garcia. Jenna L. Bynum. Heather L. Torres. Edwina R. Real. Gilberto Mamaleo Jr. Laura Casanita. Carol V. Hunt. Jamie Blackford. Savannah Blackford. <coughs> Taylor Lene Collier. Kayla A. Montoya. Sandra G. Silva. <coughs> Shannon Taylor. Crystal S. Workington. Brianna C. Rango. Eddie Ramirez. Karina Rodriguez. Mackenzie Kelly. Matthew Gelmini. Jared A. Deaver. Olivia R. Anderson. Sandra P. Hernandez. Yasmin Neri. Melanie M. Hernandez. Haley M. Johnson. Mahibi L. Pratt. Valerie Angel. Lizette Leguenis. Diana M. Silva. Rebecca Irene Rodriguez. Jaylene D. Garcia. Leanne Miola Kuntz. Tiani Adams. Chelsea Cox. Shay Davis. Kayla Marie Gunning. Melva Carson. Nancy Duran. Ruby Gonzalez Torres. Nicholas E. Solis. We congratulate the graduates in the School of Education.
Yep. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, Mr. President, and Madam Provost, I present to you the candidates from the School of Humanities, Religion, and Social Science. Sophia Carpenter. Eliseo A. Montez. Amy Zaninovich. Alexandria Jasso. Bailey Poole. Brianna Burgess. Seth Garcia, Mason Ricks, Giselle Martin, Rosa Martinez Vasquez, Karina Valdez, Michelle Torres Cruz. Coleman Elliott, Angelica Madrigal, Caitlin Garrison, Desiree Carnell, Emily Jordan. Inocencio Salazar. Benjamin Hernandez Garcia. Williams Garcia. Alicia Garcia. Jacqueline Avila. Laura Hand, Caitlin Doolittle, Randy Hernandez Vargas, Mitchell DeBall, Jesus Gomez. Madison Willis, Kiana Gloria Espinosa, Julissa Lopez, Elita Vargas de Leon, Victoria de Leon. Marisa Hernandez. Annette Tiog Ortega. Benjamin Thornbury. Brooke L. Criswell. Rosemary Kirch Gessner. Sarah Boyd. 
Mariah Cantu Nunez. Savannah Rausch. Sonora Kovacevic. Arlene Vela Rodriguez. Ermalinda Vela Rodriguez. Viviana Ramirez Ibarra. Ruthie May Halasco. Mai Si Zhong. Connie Preston. Jasmine Verk. Lori Small. Kieran Hicks. Valerie Claustro. Stephanie Fernandez Magallon. Jacob Munoz. Victoria Beruecos. Juliana Garcia. Monica Plata. Clarissa Cedillo. Brenda Canales. Regina Alfaro. Myra Renteria. Judith Haro. Ashley D.L. West. James. Ariel Amelia Hyder. Sorry. Angela Perez. Dana Gutierrez. Jill Reina Canales. Rosemary Musquez. Valentine Farrell. Brianna Escobedo. Lucero Vargas. Esther Ruelas. Alexander Sandoval. Shady Hernandez. Amy Conwell. Sydney Roberts. Emily Middle. Alejandro Rodriguez. Nancy Gomez. Jocelyn Rua. Michaela Villarreal. Eva Trujillo. Melissa Barragan. Selena Gonzalez. Sormaira Figueroa. Kayla Eubank. Angelica Bautista. Jessica Morales. Sandra Archuleta. Haley Reed. 
Marisa Juarez. Taylor Miley Gallien. Jenna Rodriguez. Stephanie Pacheco. Christina Beer. Tashana Bishop. Luis Alberto Valencia Suarez. My Her. Vera Scott Slater. Brianna Estela Garcia. Alondra Medina. Angelica Vega. Destiny Raquel Ortiz. Marilee Rendon. Marisleas Flores. Destiny Cano. Gabriela Lopes. Athena Evelyn Pedro. Seth Miller. Leland Korn. Brenda Hernandez Gomez. Marissa Escareno. Callie Andrea Molinero. Madison Alley. Micah Chafin. Hannah Hernandez. Brianna Martinez. Angeles Estrada. Mariana Bautista Almazan. Karina Ortiz Ramirez. Mariana Aguiar Zuniga. Jennifer Reynoso Vasquez. Veronica Mendez Garcia. Madison Flores. Elizabeth Huerta Chaidez. Jacqueline Para. Brianna Guerrero. Maria Ortega Ramirez. Paula Lillian Mercado Cordero. Jocelyn Madrigal Granados. Genesis Navarrete. Maria Borodi. Tyra Marquez. Liliana Besseril. Kai D. Dirks. Nathan Kendricks. 
Alexander Ferguson. Zachary Bennett. Brady Wilson Crow. Earl Mutra. Brenda Wendy Vences. Elizabeth Martinez. We congratulate the graduates in the School of Humanities, Religion, and Social Science. Mr. Chairman, Mr. President, and Madam Provost, I present to you the candidates from the School of Natural Sciences. Jason Datsko. Peter Ramos. Samuel Jazo Castaneda. Jermaine D. Collado. Danae D. Manabog Gatewood. Chloe S. Chloe A. Sharp. Vanessa Cochrane. Juliessa Mercado. Nicolette Campos. Jose Mosqueda. Francesca Ann B. Cruz. Francisco O. Lopez. Iskander Bas Lakova. Rene Castillo. Nicholas Zweifel. Bao Van No. Juliet Hardy. Haley Bentoncourt. Callan D. Moon. David Nicolas Chavez. Emily B. Hurtado. Vanessa R. Zuinga. Michaela J. Kennedy. Brianna M. Villafana. Emily Hurtado. Oh, sorry. Michaela Gianna. Great. Gianna A. Dickinson. Toby N. Bartlett. Ariana M. Aguilar. Danielle Vicentilit.
Martin Cano. Raul Pinchetta. Christopher Crawford. Michael R. Mendola. Ramey M. Gordillo. Rebecca Tapina Brasistia. Chantal A. Monter. Justin Evan Fusen. Michael E. Barker. Marcos Santoyo. Danielle R. Chastain. Gabriela Casanova. Rachel Vega Garcia. Raquel Cortez. We congratulate the graduates in the School of Natural Sciences. The, I would like to thank the university staff who have planned and executed this commencement ceremony today. I'm going to ask the graduates to stand. As a sign of your new graduate status, please move your tassels from the right side of your cap to the left side. You may be seated. I would also like to take this time to to express our appreciation for all our staff and faculty who helped plan this event. Let's give them a hand clap. Will the candidates for the degree of Master of Arts, Master of Science, Master of Business Administration, and Master of Divinity, please stand. <laughs> President Jones, on behalf of the faculty of Fresno Pacific University, I am pleased to present these women and men for the master's degree.
They have completed intensive graduate studies and have demonstrated their mastery of advanced areas of specialized knowledge. They are prepared to serve both God and humanity in this world. I present them to you as worthy to candidates for the degree of Master of Arts, Master of Science, Master of Business Administration, and Master of Divinity. By virtue of the authority vested in me by, as president by the Board of Trustees, and on the recommendation of the faculty who have taught you, evaluated you, and modeled the Christian faith for you, I confer upon each of you the degree of Master of Arts, Master of Science, Master of Business Administration, and Master of Divinity as appropriate to your program of study with all its privileges and obligations. Mr. President, Mr. Chairman, and Madam Provost, I present to you the candidates from the School of Business. Adam Salenta. <laughs> T.U. Golita Yang. <laughs> Felipe Souza. Bruno Bromiate. Bjorn Adin. Bryn A. Boyet. Erisbet L. Torres Villasenor. Juan J. Oyurvides. Anissa R. Gatan. Alejandra Solwasser. Alejandra Garibe. Shivjeet Singh Tind. Navjot Singh. Samantha Babureskin. Tania Y. Waller. Tyrone Vineney Jr. Brenda Garcia Covarubias. Angelina P. Botello. Anna Hernandez. Caroline Lumwe. Nancy Yanez. Joshua T. Edrington. Blanca Torres. Jeffrey Jones. We congratulate the graduates in the School of Business. Mr. Chairman, Mr. President, and Madam Provost, I present to you the candidates from the School of Education. Kimberly Rose Ramirez. Mallory McNeely. Ashley M. Green. Nicole Wales. Ruth L. Producto. Miguel Rivera. Whitney Don Strong. 
Heather Moore. Pablo Emmanuel Gutierrez. Brittany Sanchez Sarnillo. Brianna Inez Ayala. Elizabeth Melgato Taylor. Maria Cifuentes. Jessica Perez. Maria Alina Magina Gonzalez. Belen Caldada. Ariana Valle. Kayla Davis. Alyssa Hitt. Isamar Vasquez. Jeanette Martinez Gardner. Valerie Shelton. Nancy Garcia Urista. Eric Velarde. Andrew C. Brandt. Austin S. E. Rurick. Arlette Magaloni. Kaylin Gaden. Alexandria Navarro. Alicia Chavez. Michelle Marshall. Michelle Payne. Amber K. Petro. Mario E. Ordaz. Leslie House Rouse. Charisse Nusi. Steve Luna. Talon N. Burkett. Jennifer M. Hernandez. Diana Gutierrez. Kimberly Veracruz. Adriana Campos. Mara Sandoval. Madison Burrow. Anthony G. Lozano. Rashawn O'Neill. Mitchell Vince Sandoval. Carrie Camarillo. Camarillo, sorry. Jill Sapad. Linda Torres. Lizette Navarro. Jamie Choi. 
Caitlin Ackerman. Jackie Lynn Martinez. Megan Kate Sullivan. Liani I. Hernandez. Victor Valdivia. We congratulate the candidates in the School of Education. Mr. Chairman, Mr. President, and Madam Provost, I present to you the candidates from the School of Humanities, Religion, and Social Science. Ruby Rodriguez. Diana Osigeta. We congratulate the graduates in the School of Humanities, Religion, and Social Science. Mr. Chairman, Mr. President, and Madam Provost, I present to you the candidates from the School of Natural Sciences. Jessica M. Evans. Marisol Gutierrez. Martha Guzman. Guadalupe Kilsey. Cheryl L. Ailman. Zachary J. Holland. Pa Bai Veng. AJ Kirby. Garrett Thomas Cook. Kenneth Ng. Michael Anthony Stefan Fulford. We congratulate the graduates in the School of Natural Sciences. Mr. Chairman, Mr. President, and Madam Provost, I present to you the candidates from the seminary. Prajet Aripo. Chandra E. Lamaster. Yolanda M. Padilla. Esther Rosales. Susan S. Tovar. Jennifer N. Jaime. Kristen Brimage Frascona. Hunter W. Dykus. Jessica A. Bishop. Yesenia Sanchez.
Alida M. Ledesma. Ashton M. Peary. Hannah G. Isuzi. Shelley Warren. Katharina Ruth Nieves. Brian Michael Guy. Robert Ross. Nathan D. Enns. Sylvia Lopez. Brittany Howard. Krista Weens. Amanda J. Palias. Jeray N. Mukawa. Paul D. Goad. We congratulate the graduates from the seminary. about you all. But that's a lot of work. <laughs> Congratulations. Today, uh, we have a special alumni. Uh, we have a special group of people for our alumni to participate in our commis uh, commencement ceremony today. Uh, we call them our golden grads. We are honoring the 50th anniversary of the graduates from Pacific College, 1970, 1971, and 1972. These golden grads, along with all the graduates that have gone before us, have helped lay the foundation for what Fresno Pacific University is today. As I read your name, please stand and remain standing until uh, we complete this list. Susan Keck Berg. Judy Brown. Ron Brown. Merlin Carr Bryan. Mark Franz. Susan Penner Franz. Karen Newfield Peters, Gary Preeb. Hey, Gary. <laughs> Charles Spencer, Laurie Durskin Wall, Walter Wall, and Pat Friesen Unruh. Let's give them a hand. Turn around so people can see you. Good, good. Thank you. I asked our campus pastor, Brian Davis, to actually come and give us the benediction. At this time, won't you uh, please stand for the closing prayer and the benediction? Gentlemen, uh, please remove your caps. As we entrust the future of our graduates to the faithful hands of our Lord Jesus, let us unite our hearts in prayer. Let's pray. Our gracious and loving God, we ask that your hand would be on all of our graduates as we celebrate the end of this journey and the beginning of a new one. 
We thank you for your faithfulness that you have shown to us through this time. The knowledge and gifts, talents and abilities that you have given us, they belong to you. Holy Spirit, enable us to discern what is right, what is good, and what is true. Bless us with anger at injustice and oppression in this world, and empower us to walk into our future with faith, with hope and love, and the confidence to think that we can participate in the coming of your kingdom on heaven or in, on earth as it is in heaven. And be faithful to us, God, as we look forward to that next time we will all be gathered together, next time in the fullness of your kingdom that has come, dressed in robes of righteousness and the garments of salvation, as we together shout, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne. And now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine, according to His power that is at work within us, to Him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. And all God's children said together, Amen. Faculty and graduates, please uh, remain standing for the recessional. Guests, please be seated at this time. We ask that you meet your graduate outside of the arena where you entered this morning, just to the north side of this arena. Thank you all very much.